proper sex in order to rent a home is part of an ongoing federal trial now. 13 Chief Investigator Darcy Spears has the bizarre story of a property manager who required his tenant to sign a sex contract and is now facing allegations of discrimination, harassment, and fraud. Darcy, what is this all about? Well, you guys, it's actually hard to fathom that someone would put something like this in writing. We've had to cover some of the words because we can't show them on TV, but here it is in black and white. It's so crazy, I didn't believe it until I saw it in the court record. This is Alan Rothstein, the man who wrote the sex contract. Court records show he forced a prospective tenant to sign it in November 2018 in order to rent this four-bedroom home on Wedgebrook Street near Las Vegas Boulevard and St. Rose Parkway. At the time, Rothstein was the property manager and also a real estate broker. He lost both licenses after a Nevada real estate division investigation. He now stands to lose a lot more if a federal judge finds him guilty. He's currently on trial for violations of the Fair Housing Act in this lawsuit filed by his former tenant. And the facts are unlike anything this experienced housing lawyer has ever seen. My reaction was you had to be putting me on, that nobody in their right mind would go to the trouble to draw up a contract like this. No one involved would talk to us as the trial is ongoing. We asked legal expert Bruce Flammy to analyze the case. Have you ever seen anything like this? No, not even on bar exams in law school. Nobody has ever put something like this together that I've ever seen. Although, in all candor, I think there's more of these out there. Sources close to the case tell 13 Investigates this is not the first time Rothstein has done this and there are other victims. Rothstein himself admitted to the real estate division that he wrote the sex contract and required the tenant to sign it. And in court records, he says any agreements or documents mentioned speak for themselves. When somebody says the document speaks for itself, what they're really saying is I don't want to talk about it. We're talking about it to the extent that we can. We'll begin with the title. It's direct consent for sexual intercourse and or or which is in italics. Who names a document that? It goes on to say, please read this legal contract carefully. And that's where I started laughing because this is a legal contract the way the uh, actors on Grey's Anatomy are real doctors, okay? This is literally not worth the paper it's printed on. The terms of the so-called contract are even crazier than the title. The tenant had to swear she wasn't signing under the influence of any intoxicant, including alcohol, drugs, oysters. Truffles, sea cucumber, strawberries, lobster. I've never known anybody to be under the influence of lobster. Dark chocolate, cocaine, LSD, and cannabis. I don't know where you get a list like that. Another paragraph says the tenant swears she does not currently have a boyfriend, girlfriend, or parent who is larger, meaner, and more physically aggressive, owns firearms, and or is more possessive than Rothstein. She was told if she didn't sign this, she was not going to be able to get the unit. So in all, for all intents and purposes, it's exactly sex for a place to live. It's exactly what it is. And it's almost sex on demand. What do we make of the fact that she initialed this thing? Nothing. Um, people sign things all the time and the popular myth is, well, you signed it, so it's binding. Now, there are a variety of things you can sign that are not binding. Uh, any contract that is against the law or public policy is not binding. So why would anyone sign anything like this? Court documents say in August 2018, the tenant and her five children were homeless, living from week to week in a residential hotel. The Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority threw them a lifeline, approving them for Section 8, a federal program that funds local public housing authorities to help low-income families rent from private landlords. But one of the provisions of Section 8 is that once you're approved, you have to find a residence that will be covered by the program within about 60 days of when you're approved. Now, depending on where she was in that 60-day window when this thing came up, she may not have had other options. Court records say she'd been allowed to move in and paid out of pocket to fix up the house so HUD would approve it. So when you slap this document down in front of her uh, and say sign this or you have no place to live, that's coercion, that's duress, and I believe it's a violation of federal law. The tenant's lawsuit alleges several other violations, including charging illegal fees and wrongful eviction after she refused any sexual encounters. 
In court records, Rothstein disputes any fair housing violations. Attorney Falami says no matter the outcome of the civil trial, accountability shouldn't stop there. There may or may not have been crimes committed here. The word extortion flashes in my mind in this kind of situation. But that's not what this trial is about that's going on in federal court right now. But this is a good example of a case where maybe somebody ought to go to jail. When the real estate division revoked Rothstein's licenses, state investigators found he listed a fake address for his brokerage. The state also found he repeatedly made unwanted sexual advances when he had the tenant come to his home to sign documents. He was fined $94,000 in that, and we will update this story with the outcome of the federal case. This is absolutely wild, Darcy, but you know, you kept mentioning a property manager. Was there any landlord that was involved in this? Well, he was the landlord, but there was also a homeowner. Okay. The homeowner contracted with Rothstein as the property manager to execute the lease. He's the only one who met with the tenant. The homeowner was originally named in the lawsuit, but then was later dropped from it. Wow. And we should wow. mention that the homeowner who has since sold the home is the one who filed the complaint with the real estate wow. division in 2020, which led to Rothstein losing his licenses so that he can't continue doing this to Shocking other folks. Story. Absolutely wild.